You read about the rhetorical situation in chapters 1 through 5 of the Norton textbook. This presentation and corresponding reading will give you an alternative conception of the rhetorical situation. We'll begin with three key questions that are based on the assumption that whether you're communicating to an academic or professional audience, your ultimate goal is to persuade that audience. Even if you're just explaining something or providing exposition, you still have to convince that audience that they should pay attention to you and that you are a trustworthy source of information. Um, so in this way, everything is an argument. Every piece of communication that, that you know you produce is persuasive. With that in mind, successful persuasion boils down to three key questions. Who is my audience? What is the most important thing I want to tell my audience? And what is the best way of making sure my audience understands what I have to say? Another way to think about that is the journalistic questions who, what, and how. We'll break this down further with the Papio mix which breaks down the rhetorical situation into purpose, audience, format, evidence, and organization. You'll notice this is very similar to purpose, audience, genre, stance, and media design, uh, which is the matrix that your textbook uses. This is simply another way of thinking about the same thing. Um, and, and for some of you, you might find this more practical and more applicable to certain you know, writing contexts. Um, We'll begin with purpose, uh, and, and the key question for purpose is ultimately why are you writing? Why are you speaking or why are you presenting? Uh, and, and you might think this is, this is oversimplified, but if you don't have a clear understanding of what you're trying to communicate, and you can't reduce that to one simple sentence, you need to go back to the drawing board and you need to ask the people who have given you this task, who have given you this assignment, um, so that you do develop a clear understanding of what it is you're doing. Um, that way you won't needlessly spin your wheels writing something that, that has no purpose. Everything that you write, every active communication has some purpose. Uh, even if that purpose is simply uh, my teacher or my boss is making me do it. Um, that is a, a rhetorical situation that you have to consider and you need to have a clear understanding of that purpose before you proceed. This one sentence reduction of your purpose will ultimately turn into your thesis. Once you add audience to your purpose, you have a thesis statement. The A of PAFIO is audience. Your characterization of the audience, coupled with your implicit understanding of purpose, allows you to formulate a communication that's understandable and effective um, and is ultimately persuasive, which is the purpose of all communication. Questions to ask about your audience. How much background do you need to give your audience? Um, how much can you accept or, pres or assume is general knowledge? Uh, what does your audience need to know? Why are, are they listening to you? Why would they listen to you? Um, and, and what should they be getting out of this? And finally, are you a credible speaker or writer? Um, do you have ethos with the reader? Do you have to build trustworthiness or authority with that particular audience. That will determine um, the, the amount of evidence, the amount of structure that you have to put into your argument. Finally, will the reader agree or disagree with you? Are they on your side? Um, if you are addressing peers who are already on your side, you're going to have to, you'll have to use a less sophisticated rhetorical tone with them than if, if you're speaking or writing to a hostile audience. Format is ultimately what your textbook calls media or design. Um, but another way to think about it is the way information is delivered, the way it looks, or you know, as the Roman rhetorician Quintilian said, is the head of rhetoric. Um, as a general rule, format identifies the main points of your argument quickly and gives the idea of the organizational structure and content. Format isn't just a quality of writing. Um, format is a quality for spoken delivery, too. Uh, every act of communication has a format, and it's really important that you consider format rhetorically. Um, if, you're having, if you're in a situation where you have to decide between an email and a memo, um, you need to understand the, the rhetorical context of each one. 
E. Evidence. And this is a direct quote from the reading. Unless you're an authority on your subject, your opinions carry only as much weight as the evidence you can marshal to support them. So the P, A, and F are going to help determine how much evidence is necessary. Look at the evidence, follow where it leads. Look at the simplest explanation that accounts for all the evidence. We call that Occam's razor. And look at all likely alternatives and be aware of absolute statements. Um, the level of evidence that you have to use largely depends on the audience. Uh, how much information is going to be required to persuade that audience? How much work do you have to do to convince them that your position on an issue or your, or your presentation of an issue is correct? Um, Again, if your audience is already on your side, you're going to have to use less compelling evidence than if you're presenting to a hostile audience. As always, be aware of fallacies and flawed logic. And absolute statements uh, is certainly one of those. You, you don't want to come across as dogmatic. You aren't preaching, um, especially in an academic or professional context. Finally, O. Organization depends on the P-A-F-N-E. What is your goal? Who are you communicating to? And what is the physical delivery or the format of the information? How much evidence do you have? Some common methods of organization include chronologically or you know, beginning to end. Spatial represents you know, how ideas relate to each other physically. Logical organization is more sophisticated. And finally, problem analysis solution, which is the format that, uh, or the organization that many professional documents take, whether you're writing a proposal or a report. Order of importance, um, it's important to keep in mind that you generally always want to put the most important stuff at the beginning. Um, you're always going to lose some of your audience as time goes on and people become distracted or disinterested. So order of importance is a good way of organizing your communication if you have a large audience um, and there are some things you want all audience members to know. Please refer to the Using Payfio Planning reading to supplement this presentation and think about Payfio Planning when you're working on your literacy narrative and the other essays for this semester. Uh, hopefully you'll find this and the rhetorical situation presented in part one of the Norton textbook helpful.